2024 prelims examination, we have begun with the countdown. And all of you out there, the UPSC aspirants, willing to take this attempt, you definitely must be charting out what should be your focal point of preparation so that you take this successful attempt. I'm here to take the outline of the strategy that you should be following in targeting 30 to 35 questions that comes up in your prelims examination directly, passively from geography. If I go with the topics that are mentioned in our prelims syllabus, because it doesn't give me any foolproof inculcate of what exactly is to be covered. So it is three things. Number one, environment, ecology, biodiversity, climate change. I'll be taking a detailed session on this in the next video. Number two, socio-economic development. And number three, physical geography of world in India. If you try to combine them, you have some 30 to 35 questions and mind it, I'm not including that hardcore typical economics question which relates to the repo rate or GDP and etc. I'm talking about agriculture, general policy initiatives that we as geographers take to our stride. So when we talk about the nature, if you see the previous year questions and try to judge because we announcing the beginning of the general studies modules for prelims examination by third week of January, we'll be taking up the approach of last 10 years as our base of the preparation. And if I talk about specifically in terms of the three sections that I'll be taking into account, and of course in one single session it becomes difficult for to cover us all of them. If I take geography as the physical geography section only here, and I divide it into the blocks because it reads physical geography, world and India both. So if I take physical geography with geomorphology, climatology and oceanography, I can take in the last 10 years, if I'm taking the last 10 years, 2011 to 2023 ka ek attempt lay kar chale, to I have got geomorphology giving me some 11 questions altogether. Climatology gave me some 22 questions and oceanography gave me some 11 questions. Nutshell, I need to be comfortable with the conventional segment of hardcore physical geography. I'm talking about the questions in the last 10 years. And you can understand that the nature of the questions, of course, is not always what we call conventional, you know, that last year we had a question, I'll just be talking about some of the questions about the seismic waves. Now that type of question comes out as straightforward. I need to be aware of it. It is no guesswork that you apply. And that is the reason you need to approach the things with what is called expertise orientation. I cannot go with absolute general takeaway thing. Because physical geography incorporate India and Indian perspective questions also. So if I take up as column number four for it as Indian physical geography, which is actually incorporating rivers, lakes, reservoirs, mountains, climate and every other thing. In the last 10 years, you have 43 questions coming up your way. So you can see that if I am in the position of taking last questions asked in examination to the tune of 43 from Indian physical geography and 11 plus 11 plus 22 when I'm taking up the hardcore physical geography, what strong edge I develop. And then you need to understand that with this physical geography itself, you are having the overlapping contemporary edge. And when I'm saying contemporary edge, it is definitely what are the places that have been in news. What have been the important locations that have been in news? And that is where we take up the map-based questions. And mind it, if I add map-based questions to this physical aspect, you are taking up the number of questions to be in the tune of 23. I mean, you just try to judge out that if I take the last 10 years of the question trend of just a topic that we are targeting this particular session towards, is physical geography and a part of it that is geomorphology. I'm having so many segments that I can prepare. You need to take the approach that is clear, defined, because you know, you need to understand that shortcuts doesn't work. 
I cannot go with the random sequence of PYQ's solving. I will be solving numerous multiple choice questions. But then what is the track with which I should judge it up? So your preparation has to be correlated with conventional texts with the contemporary sources. Newspaper substitution is not allowed. And that is the point that we are integrating our strategy with the two things. What is that integration we are talking about? So when it comes on to the integration with reference to the textbook, we definitely ask all of us to take G.C. Leong. This is a no substitute textbook with NCERTs. And the last year uh, prelims paper has given us a thumping reminder that reading plus two NCERT, that is 11th and 12th class NCERT, is a must. And I am talking about geography only. Along with it, you should definitely take up Charles Ferro textbook, which is a very important textbook in covering up the conventional aspects of this physical geography. I am right now not talking about environment and I am not talking about socio-economic development because these three blocks is what comes in my domain and I take the classes as the three modular ones. When you talk about the textbooks, it gives you a gist, it gives you a push it gives you the clarity concept clarity because concept clarity is a must when you are trying to attempt the questions in prelims examination have you noticed that the instruction of prelims question paper reads select the appropriate answer and appropriation can be done by the student number one who is aware of the concepts very well and number two have developed that comprehensive approach of preparation that can seep down entire knowledge about that topic to the four given choices. I do understand that some questions are very factual, but even the factual questions are done with the conventional understanding of the thing. So the text that will be taking our base and the 10 years pre previous year questions as our base will be applying Charles Ferro, NCRT's 11th and 12th standard and GC Long. This will be our base for the physical geography section I'm talking about. And when I try to take up the nature of the questions, let us try to see some of them. I've charted out some questions that is from geomorphology. That is something which is very hardcore kind in terms of physical geography. It has not been with that much of the weightage as I see with climatology and oceanography, but it has been there. And if I try to segregate that out with India and uh, here, then the number of questions comes out as 11. If I talk about some questions from geomorphology, I'm having two questions in front of me of the total analysis that I have charted out for the last 10 years. And this is what we'll be doing with every of our topic. So if you see these two questions in front of you, you'll find that question one, last year examination, Question one that has been listed here is actually not a hardcore geomorphological question because the resource base that has been asked with the coastal track of India is correlated with what we call economic geology. And mind it when I talk about economic geological study, it relates to the geological time scale. And geological time scale is something that has been very prominently focused in your NCRTs. And it's a conventional point. It is India, it is economic geology, it is the coastal track. I mean, it's a mixed bag type of question. Compared to it, if I take the consider following statement again, 2023 question of the P and S waves. You have to understand that this is a direct question from earthquake. It's hardcore geomorphological question. And it is the question where I don't need to debate. As in if I have taken the preparation of uh, geomorphology with earthquake, with volcanism, I'm in the position of handling it. It is not going with anything called ifs and buts. So if these two sample questions of 2023 prelims is taken into account, I get the understanding that where my preparation should go. And if I continue to scroll further. Now question number three as our previous year question analysis we are taking up. You can see that the question is asking me about the 
celestial dimension which can be correlated with the climatology as well because the question reads in the northern hemisphere the longest day of the year normally occurs in and we have been given the months of june and july with first and second half it has to do with revolution of earth around sun and mind it when i talk about revolution and rotation of earth we are talking about earth's movement and earth's movement makes a very typical constituent of study of physical geography wherein climatology as well as oceanography along with a deviated term it seems like same but a deviated term called earth movements belongs hardcore to geomorphology so i am aware of revolution of the earth axial inclination 365 days with solstice summer and winters equinoxes spring and autumn i am done with this question i don't need to struggle with it it's read and it is done so this is the type of questions that you are encountering and i don't think they are difficult to be tamed you just need to have a clear direction of preparing it i continue and i have got in 2019 almost the similar climate overlapping with earth's movement question and can you read it out on 21st june so 21st june we are talking about summer solstice you are being given some statements and you have to identify what is the correct one it does not set below the horizon now this goes with what we call graticule network that is latitudes and longitude taken together when i take a very conventional and and mind it it can be called a map based question because map is presentation of globe on a plane sheet and that has been done with the support of latitudes and longitudes setting below the horizon has to do with the axial inclination of planet earth and the knowledge about latitude arctic circle 66 and a half degrees north antarctic circle 66 and a half degrees south can be considered in the respective season as horizon when northern hemisphere is experiencing summers sun do not set below horizon you have 24 hours of day in north pole now if you have taken that learning with graticule with the season cycle that is climatology combined with map this question comes out as an easy question for you it's an easy bet i don't have any problem in resolving it and whenever you are preparing something where the syllabus do not give you any definition or clarity it's just physical geography world in india then you have to be very cautious with what is the type of questions that have been asked in previous years because that gives you the glide to am i going on a right track or not number 6 question which i have listed in our 10 years of question analysis sort of a uh, 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 no say demarcation it is somewhere where i can correlate with lotic habitat so it goes with ecology i can take it up with rivers so i can take it with the geomorphology i can take it with unsustainable mining so i can relate it to environment geography also so this is the question that was asked in 2018 prelims is the question that can be a multi aspect question so i cannot be selective you know you need to be comfortable with sand mining lotic habitat lotic habitat with limnitic and profundal wherein we are having profundal largely with the river meandering where we take the cut bank and all of them so which of the possible consequence of a heavy sand mining in river beds river beds ka matlab kya hota hai river beds correlate with what we identify as thal waves thal waves correlate largely with profundal habitat profundal habitat is non sunlit and that non sunlit by default will result into decreased salinity of water river bed ki baat ho rahi hai pollution of ground water lowering of water level you have to take the judgment of it with the choices given because the code is been applied because on the face value i'll say river lotic is a fresh water source to salinity ka to kuch nahi hona chahiye 
but then when i talk about the suspended particulate matter i might not be having that much of the dissolved substances as i am having in sea water but some dissolved substances do is identified with river so i i have that overlap wherein the physical geography questions is overlapping with something that is environment and i need to integrate an answer so pyqs definitely helps you to judge how to proceed and i'm just crawling our scavenged out category of what has been identified as geomorphology but in most of the case you must be noticing let me make this complete question come in our frame and see it is the question of 2014 ab is question ko agar aap dhyan se notice karoge to if i read glacial cycles it seems that we are talking about u static factor that is climatic if i read continent drift it's hardcore geomorphology because continent drift theory is a geomorphological concept ab aap isko combine karo aur question ko dekhte hain which of the following phenomena might have influenced the evolution of organism so ye to fir biodiversity wala question aa gaya meri knowledge of continent drift theory will help me to understand that the drift of the continent is also the reason for the change of the climate among the natural causes of climate change we identify continent drift to be a reason continent drift have been the reason of the divergent evolution of organisms glacial cycle as glacial period and interglacial period is the u static factor that has been correlated with some solar output variations milankovitch cycles that definitely have influenced the evolution and extinction of life and that is the reason when i talk about the five mass extinctions that have taken place so far it has been largely because of the natural causes sixth is what we are highlighting with hipco where will you draw the boundary line this question of prelims examination 2014 can be clubbed up in all i can write it in climatology i can write it in geomorphology i can write it in environment ecology biodiversity climate change are you getting it so a comprehensive approach of studies required ad hoc nahi chahiye कि आपने कुछ पिछले साल के क्वेश्चन कर लिए हैं और आप उसको सॉल्व करने के पोजीशन में हो तो यू कैन स्टैंड हेयर एंड मेक यू नो अंडरस्टैंड योर पीयर ग्रुप दैट डजेंट वर्क दैट वे यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट देयर हैज टू बी एन इंटर रिलेशन अ फाउंडेशन क्रिएशन शॉर्टकट डू नॉट वर्क of course at the end of the day you have to practice previous year questions but then when will you practice or what will be the logic with which you will practice if you are not prepared with the topics you don't know what is continent drift or what is meant by glacial cycle then what how will you solve the question because questions do not get repeated is wrong ab ye fir se dekh lo 2013 ka question hai फिर से वो रेवोल्यूशन ऑफ दी अर्थ के साथ एसोसिएट करके इसको देख लो एंड इट इज गिविंग यू वेरिएशन इन देंथ ऑफ द डे टाइम एंड नाइट टाइम फ्रॉम सीजन टू सीजन इज ड्यू टू रोटेशन रेवोल्यूशन लैटीट्यूडनल पोजिशन रेवोल्यूशन ऑफ अर्थ ऑन टिल्टेड एक्सेस रेवोल्यूशन अराउंड सन इन इलिप्टिकल मैनर ये होना चाहिए ना आंसर इलिप्टिकल में तो आप ऑर्बिटल एसेंट्रिसिटी के साथ वेरिएशन इन द डिस्टेंस इलिप्टिकल आई हैव गॉट पेरी हिलियन एंड एपी हिलियन एंड इफ इट बिकम्स अ सर्क्यूलर देन द इंसुलेशन विल नॉट बी हैविंग दैट मच ऑफ वेरिएशन बट वेन आई से वॉट इज द रीजन आई हैव गॉट सीजन साइकिल बिकॉज प्लानिट अर्थ इज इनक्लाइंड ऑन इट्स एक्सेस ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड हाफ डिग्रीज एंड इज रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड सन इन थ्री हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फाइव डेज माने इससे ज्यादा आसान क्वेश्चन तो कुछ हो ही नहीं सकता सो so, अपने दिमाग से मिथ हटा देना है कि आई डोंट गेट द क्वेश्चंस विच आर वेरी बेसिक आई मैक्सिमम गेट द क्वेश्चंस विच आर वेरी बेसिक नेचर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस आर ओवरलैपिंग द ओवरलैप हैज गॉट टू डाइमेंशंस डायमेंशन वन ओवरलैप बिटवीन मल्टीपल टॉपिक्स ऑफ आर सिलेबस मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दैट आर स्क्रॉल्ड टॉक्स अबाउट दैट एंड ओवरलैप बिटवीन कन्वेंशनल एंड कंटेम्प्रेरी तो आप किस तरह से प्रिपेयर करेंगे विद ऑल द बेसिक टेक्स्ट एंड ऑल द फंडामेंटल अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इज इंटीग्रेटेड विद दैट इज इंटर वोवन विद मैप आइटम्स बिकॉज वेन एवर सर्टन न्यूज आइटम क्रॉप्स अप इन योर मैप एनी थिंग अबाउट स्पेसिमेन अबाउट रिसोर्स अबाउट प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया अबाउट एनी एक्सट्रीम ट्रीटी 
any major trade route, any prominent oil spill, anything that is having maximum possibility to be covered up in your question paper. And that will be our strategy. I've taken some PYQs of physical geography overlapping in nature. I'll talk about the climate specific questions and then I'll separately take up the reference of our study on environment, ecology, biodiversity, climate change. And when I talk about three blocks of our study, physical geography, world and India, environment, ecology, biodiversity, climate change is complete. 23rd, 23 ka bhi question paper aap dekhoge. Uh, geography se 15 question. Environment, ecology, biodiversity se 18 question. And if I take that economic portion where I delete out that hardcore economic segment, to bhi mere paas kam se kam 6 se 8 question hai jo hum prepare kar sakte hain. So 30 to 35 question ka target lekar, 45 days ka approach mein, preparing with all the set conventional textbooks with previous year question. So I have opened up with the admission. I'll be giving you the glimpse of how to proceed up with the other things in the coming following videos. So do take the note of this series. And if you are willing to, do join in and see the difference of your prelims preparation strategy right here with me, Neetu Singh at Direction IS. Bye-bye for the time being.